Hello everyone, my name is Matthew Watson and I'm the Curator of Art at Bolton Museum. In this brief talk, I want to look at some of my favourite Christmas story paintings and winter scenes in the museum collection. I should say, first of all, that there are actually very few wintry landscapes in the museum collection, and even fewer depictions of the Christmas story. There are probably several reasons for this. The first has to do with the fact that Bolton's collection of art is dominated by 19th and 20th century landscapes and portraits. We've only got a small number of paintings from earlier periods in art. For example, the Renaissance or Baroque periods, when biblical subjects were more of the norm. And as for winter scenes, well, maybe artists just don't like going into the cold. However, as we shall see, if they do venture out on a winter's day, a winter landscape does have a certain visual appeal. The dark forms of the trees, the colours of sunset reflected on snow. The print we've been looking at is by Gwenda Morgan and is titled The Changing Year. Gwenda Morgan was a British wood engraver. She lived in the town of Petworth in West Sussex. The main body of her work drew upon the landscape and buildings around Petworth and the neighbouring South Downs. Throughout the Second World War, she worked as a land girl just outside the town. If you work a landscape as a farmer, farm labourer or land girl, it must give you a very different sense of how fields, hedges, trees change with the seasons. How challenging it must be to work on the land in winter. And the way a scene, for example, a small wood surrounded by farmland, is utterly transformed by the arrival of autumn and then winter. As you can see, this wood engraving shows four landscapes in different seasons, including in the final scene, children playing in snow. It was completed in 1963. Next, I want to look at one of the few Christmas story paintings in the museum collection, The Nativity or the Adoration of the Shepherds by Willem van Herp, which was painted sometime between 1640 and 1669. One of the most popular subjects in Christian art, the story of the birth of Jesus, has inspired some of the most affectionate, gentle and intimate images in the Western canon. As recounted in the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, news of Christ's birth spread fast and it was not long before the first visitors arrived. Shepherds had been keeping watch over their flocks at night when the angel of law brought them news that Christ had been born. In this painting we see the shepherds, young and old, crowding around the baby. One of the unusual aspects of the painting is that it includes two female shepherds or shepherdesses. Perhaps more practical than their male counterparts, they have brought a basket of food and a copper urn full of water for Mary and her family. The Gospel of Luke states that Mary gave birth to Jesus and placed him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In Herb's painting, the stable is a building made out of wood and stone. It's probably a barn for cows or sheep, but also has the slight look of a primitive water mill. Jesus is lying in a manger full of straw. The whole scene is incredibly lively. To the left is Joseph facing right and holding his hands open in a gesture designed to display the child. In the extreme left, some cattle are looking on. And in the left foreground, a dog sits looking out of the painting at us. On the far right, a second dog rushes into the picture, appearing to bark at the shepherd in the red tunic. In the right background, in the distance, a small scene is depicted, showing the Annunciation to the shepherds. It's always the small Barely noticeable details that I like in Dutch or Flemish old master paintings. In this case, it's the straw hat that the older shepherd in the red tunic is holding. Working outdoors all day, he would need a hat to keep the sun or the rain off. 
One of the ways modern artists have approached biblical or Christmas stories like the Nativity is to update them or stage them in a contemporary setting. This lino cut print is by Roger Hampson. In the immediate foreground is a man in a flat cap and overcoat, leading a horse and a cart. He looks too old to be Joseph, but that is perhaps who he is meant to be. A young woman sits in the back of the cart. Her head is covered in a shawl and she holds a baby wrapped up in blankets. In the middle ground of the picture is a small town surrounded by hills. Given the location of the town, under Winter Hill, it must be Horwich. There are a lot of mill chimneys though, so perhaps it's a combination of Horwich and Bolton. It's a wonderfully composed and atmospheric picture with the moon hanging in the sky, the snow on the ground and the sheep sheltering beneath the wind-blown tree. One reading of the print is that it presents a version of the story of Joseph and Mary fleeing into Egypt after an angel had appeared to Joseph in a dream, telling him of King Herod's slaughter of baby boys in Bethlehem. And so began their long and arduous journey back to their hometown of Nazareth via Egypt. You could, if you wanted, see the hill in the far distance, the distinctive shape of Winter Hill, as being a reference to the hill of Golgotha where Jesus was crucified. I grew up in Horwich and nearly every Easter we would walk up Winter Hill. As Catholic boys, it was our version of the Calvary, though it usually ended up with us going to the Easter weekend fairground. So perhaps the suggestion isn't so fanciful after all, and maybe what Roger Hampson is doing is projecting forward from Christ's birth to his death. Roger Hampson was born in 1925 and grew up in Tilsley in Wigan. He is best known for his paintings, drawings and prints of the industrial surroundings in which he grew up and lived. Tilsley first of all and then Bolton. He moved to Bolton when he became the head of Bolton College of Art in the 1960s. Hampson said that his main motivation as an artist was to capture a landscape and a way of life that he knew was fast disappearing. As he stated in 1977, to be born and brought up in Tilsley was to witness the end of the Industrial Revolution in this area. His pictures in this sense are elegiac, like this image of St George's Colliery Tilsley, which closed in 1941. The colliery image and the print depicting the man leading the woman and baby in a horse and cart are part of a series of Christmas cards that Hampson made and sent to friends and family throughout his later years. He died in 1996. All the prints are liner cuts. Liner cutting is a type of relief printmaking in which areas of the lino are gouged out and the ink is then rolled onto the raised surface of the linoleum. Paper is then laid over the lino surface and then you can either hand burnish with a wooden spoon or use a printing press to take an impression. It's a cheap form of printing, one you can do at home. This is another of the Christmas cards, Walking Day. Walking days were special parades organised by churches and other organisations in Bolton and were hugely popular for many years. If you talk to people of a certain age in Bolton, many recall large processions taking place in the 1950s and 1960s. From the 1970s, however, they seem to have petered out, losing their central place in community life. I'm sure I remember taking part in one in Horwich in the 1980s, so perhaps they continued for another decade or two in some parts of Bolton. If it was a church parade, like the one shown in Hampson's print, then the various organisations involved, including the Cubs, Scouts, Brownies and Guides, would parade along the route, proudly carrying banners to mark their association with a particular church. Here are far more prints from Hampson's Christmas card series. Mill Workers, Winter Morning, Pit Brow Lassies and Chimney Sweep. The Christmas cards seem to have a commemorative function. 
They are memorials to the past. They record local rituals, jobs, industries, ways of life that were gradually dying out. In some cases, they had already ceased to exist by the time Hampson made his prints. I wonder what the people receiving these deeply nostalgic, rather melancholy Christmas cards thought of them when they opened up the envelope and looked inside. This painting is by another former head of the art school in Bolton, John Nicholson. He became principal in 1952. The title of the painting is Winter, Brian Hay Farm, Scout Road. Brian Hay Farm still exists. It's not far from Smivels Hall. It's on a popular walking route along the Scout Road, rising up to the surrounding moorland. As some of our viewers and listeners will know, you can stop off at the farm for ice cream. The lovely deep snow in this painting looks a bit like vanilla ice cream. The title of this, my final choice, is Winter at the Oaks, as seen from Harleth Wood. It was painted by W. Moss. We don't know anything about Moss or what the W stands for. William Walter Winifred. Do any of our listeners or viewers know where or what the Oaks is or was? There is the Oaks Primary School on Sharples Hall Drive in Bolton, which isn't a million miles from Harleaf Wood. Is there a connection? Please let us know. Some of you may know Ali Smith's brilliant novel entitled Winter. It includes the following evocation of a wintry landscape which links quite nicely to the two paintings we just looked at and also provides a fitting way to end this talk. Smith writes about how sombre yet bright the major symphony of winter is and how beautiful everything looks under a high frost, how every grass blade is enhanced and silvered into individual beauty by it, how even the dull tarmac of the roads the paving under our feet shines when the weather's been cold enough, and how something at the heart of us, at the heart of all of our cold and frozen states, melts when we encounter a time of peace on earth. Goodwill to all men. Happy Christmas, everyone. <laughs>